for it. That means your enemies will see it and even though they don't like it, there's nothing they can do about it because when God blesses you, nobody can reverse it. Your first love that you have for the Lord Jesus Christ. Number four, why should you fast as a believer? Fasting will allow the Holy Spirit to reveal your true spiritual condition. Fasting will allow the Holy Ghost to reveal to you your true spiritual condition. Now, let me say this to you. Many of us, we are legends in our own mind. We think we are it. But the Bible says, if thou fainest in the day of adversity, then your strength is small. Now, for some of us, uh, <laughs> the day of adversity is a day of fasting. <laughs> we can't even take it. Listen to me. How are you going to have power over the devil? Right? How are you going to have power and exercise power over principalities and powers if you don't have power over your own appetite. If you don't have power over your own flesh. Scripture says food for the belly and belly for the food. God will destroy both of them. Alright. Same man, saints. And many times when you get to find your true spiritual condition, you won't like it. Hmm? Many times you'll be like the prophet Isaiah and other prophets of old. Woe is me. Are you listening to me, saints? Because the closer you get to God, the more you realize how dirty we are. Even though we've been declared the righteousness of God, but you'll quickly discover that's your spirit, man, but your mind, your mouth, your flesh, Not something to be desired. That's why the Apostle Paul said, I have no confidence in the flesh. That's why he says, I serve God after my inward man. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. I want you to write this down. Why should you fast? Hallelujah. Fasting will give your spirit man ascendancy over your flesh. Fasting will give your spirit man ascendancy over your flesh. It will bring you to a place where you are being led by the Spirit. It will bring you to a place where you are causing your inner man to rise above your outer man. Amen? amen. Say amen, saints. In fact, let me show you a scripture here. Let's go to the book of 2 Corinthians, please. The book of 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter. Glory to God. Hallelujah. To me, that's what fasting will do. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 16. It says this, For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perisheth, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. When you are fasting, you're, causing, you're renewing your inward man day by day. Amen? Amen? And you are crucifying and modifying the deeds of the flesh. Say amen, saints. All right, why, why else should you fast? Fasting will transform and supercharge your prayer life into a richer and more explosive experience. Say amen. amen. Fasting will do what? Transform and supercharge your prayer life into a richer and more explosive experience. How many of you here will, say, will want your prayer life to be boosted up? Say amen. Amen. You want your prayer life to be supercharged. Well, and one of the avenues you can do that is that is, is through the avenue of fasting. Now, let me give you another reason why you should fast. Fasting will produce revival in your own life and make you a channel of revival to others. Say amen. amen. Say this after me. Say fasting. Amen. Say it like you had your breakfast this morning. Or better not that you didn't have any breakfast, praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. All right. Say this after me. Say fasting will produce revival in my own life. Hmm? I'm going to tell you this. Some of you need to be revived. Amen? Your spiritual life needs to be revived. Some of you just come to church, you go through the motion of going to church. But there's no life in the spirit. 
There's no anointing there. There's, I mean, it's just like a it's dead church, a dead saint. We just go through the motion. Are oh, you listening to me, saints? But there's no joy. There's no life in the spirit. There's no zeal for the things of God. There's no zeal for the house of God. There's no passion for the things of God. Well, one of the ways you can rekindle and relight your fire is through fasting and prayer. Say amen, saints. So fasting will produce revival in your own life and make you a channel of revival unto others. Say amen. Oh, write this down, please. Fasting will reveal your total dependence upon the arm of God. Fasting will reveal your what? Total dependence upon the arm of God. The scripture says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not short that he cannot save. But your hand is short. My hand is short. Amen? But God has an outstretched arm that will deliver you. Praise God. Say amen, saints. And when you are fasting, you are indicating to God, I'm relying upon you 100%. I have no confidence in the flesh. Say amen. Only you can bring about a breakthrough for me. Just like King Jehoshaphat. In 2 Chronicles, the 20th chapter, when he was outnumbered by his enemies and they were coming to obliterate him and his nation, the Bible says he was afraid, but he set himself to seek the Lord. Amen? amen. Say amen, saints. And when he sought God through prayer and fasting, glory to God, their enemies, God put confusion in the camp of the enemy. Say amen, saints. Hallelujah. Say after me, when I fast and seek the face of God, God will confuse my enemies. Say it again. When I fast and when I pray. Hallelujah. Amen. That which is supposed to confuse you, confound you, and destroy you will be confused, confounded, and be destroyed. Say amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You don't need to be afraid of your enemies. Your enemies need to be afraid of you. Praise God. Shout hallelujah. All right. Now. Let's open our Bible, please, to the book of Joel, the second chapter. When you are fasting, you are in good company. Praise God. Say amen, saints. Moses fasted, Elijah fasted, Daniel fasted, Esther fasted, Jesus fasted, Anna fasted, Paul fasted, Cornelius fasted, and the church fasted. Say amen. When you are fasting, you are in good company. Amen? amen. Say amen. amen. Let's turn our Bible, please, to this tiny book of Joel, also known as a minor prophet. And the only reason why he's known as a minor prophet is not because he had low stature. There are major prophets in the Bible and minor prophets. And the, reason, the difference is simply because of the size of the books, okay? And there are 12 minor prophets in the scriptures, and Joel, uh, Joel is one of them. Now, Joel chapter 2. Now, it is interesting that the book of Joel begins with an invasion of the enemy, an invasion of locust, an invasion of judgment, but it ends with a great outpouring. Say amen, saints. Hallelujah. And I believe this year, I believe that by the end of this year, praise God, there will be a major outpouring in your life. Can I hear an amen? amen? Come on, say this year. Amen. I'm believing God for a major outpouring of the Holy Ghost over my life. Amen. Whatever plans, whatever assignment the enemy had to invade your life, your finances, your family, Praise God. Amen. We'll end up with a great outpouring over your life and family. Amen. Say amen, saints. Amen. Now, chapter 2. Now, many times we use this verse out of context. We only use one verse. Don't ever just use one verse. Always use a text in its context. All right? Scripture says, blow ye the trumpet in Zion, and sound an alarm on my holy mountain, and let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh 
at hand. Now, I want you please to underline the day of the Lord. Whenever you see that, it's referring to judgment. Okay, now, end time prophetic teachers will tell you this is referring to um, uh, Armageddon, the battle of Arm Armageddon, but it also applied in the days of Joel, in, the, in, his, uh, in his days. Now, what happened was that Israel got into idolatry, Israel got into sin, and judgment was imminent upon them. But God says, blow the trumpet in Zion. Now, Zion also is a, a reference to Israel, but it's also a reference to the church. Scripture says, blow the trumpet in Zion and sound the alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is near at hand. A day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness, as the morning spread upon the mountains. A great people and a strong, that they have not been ever the like, neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. Now you can see, this is a people, right, that's coming to go against Israel. Mightier than Israel. They've never faced that kind of, of nation before. And the scripture says, a fire devoureth before them, and behind them a flame burneth. The land is as the garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness. Yea, nothing shall escape them. In other words, before these people attack Israel, scripture says, before them is the garden of Eden. But once they go through the land, and wreak havoc in the land, when you look back, all you can see is that the Garden of Eden has been turned into a desolate place, into a place of chaos. And for many of us, you can look back in your life, and you can remember the time where your life seemed like a beautiful garden. But then the enemy somehow penetrated your defense. And for many of us, the reason why he could penetrate our defense is because of sin, or it's because of foolish decisions. And when you look back, all you can see is no longer the Garden of Eden. You can no longer see the presence of God in your life. But all you can see are the ruins and the chaos of a defeated life. Of us start our new year with a resolution, goals for our year, dreams we hope to fulfill. Many Christians start with a time of fasting and prayer, hoping to experience God's anointing upon their life. We have a special package by Dr. Glenn Arecchion for you at a great price. A collection of the book, Seven Ways to Increase Your Anointing, and four DVD and CD titles. 101 Benefits of Fasting, Turning Desires into Destinies, Be a Prayer Warrior, Fasting Breaks Chains. The regular price is $60, but today it's just $40, plus shipping and handling. Buy it for yourself or a loved one, a friend. Listen to Dr. Glenn share with you some of the many benefits of fasting, how to increase God's anointing in your life, and turn your desires into your destiny. Shop online at glenarechion.org or call 502-523-4407. Get this great deal and be blessed. All of us at Glen Arecchion Ministries want to see your God-given dreams come true in 2015. And when you look back, all you can see is no longer the Garden of Eden. You can no longer see the presence of God in your life, but all you can see are the ruins and the chaos of a defeated life. So judgment was imminent. The scripture says in verse 4, The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses, and, are, and as horsemen so shall they run. Like the noise of chariots on the tops of the mountains they shall leap. Like the noise of a flame of fire that devoureth the stubble, and as a strong people set in battle, in battle array. Behold the face, the people shall be much pain, and all faces shall gather uh, blackness. They shall run like mighty men, they shall climb the wall like men of war. And they shall march everyone on his ways, and they shall not break their ranks. You can see these guys, this nation, the Assyrian and the Chaldeans, coming against Israel, had one thing in mind, to destroy Israel. 
So destruction was imminent. Judgment was imminent. Are you listening to me, saints? But look what the Bible says here. Look at verse 12. Therefore also now, saith the Lord, He's merciful, He's slow to anger, and of great kindness. Amen? amen. Say amen, saying, And He repenteth Him of the evil. For who knoweth if He'll return and repent and leave a blessing behind? Say amen, somebody. I want a blessing behind for me this year. Say amen, saints. How many of you want a blessing behind for you this year? Praise God. Amen. I'm not talking about, listen, there are, there are better blessings than a house. There are bigger blessings than a car. Praise God. Amen. amen. To me, the blessing that I want from God is the tangible anointing that brings about creative miracles. That's what I want from God. Say amen, saints. I want to see people, praise God, getting saved by the droves. Amen. I want to see people getting saved by the thousands. Glory to God. Say amen, saints. Hallelujah. Look at verse 15. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sanctify a fast. Call a solemn assembly. And that's what I'm doing this morning. I'm blowing the trumpet in Zion. I'm blowing the trumpet in faith lift. And I'm calling and sanctifying a fast unto the Lord. And I'm calling for a restraint. Say amen. Gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children and those that suck the breast. Let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber. Let the bride out of her closet. Are you listening to me, saints? Amen. Everybody, man and, man and woman, man and female, boy and girl, married and unmarried, even if you're recently married, God says sex is not the priority. Some people, sex is the priority. But God says, let the priests and the ministers of the Lord weep before the porch and the altar. And let them say, spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thy heritage to reproach, that the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore should they say among the people, where is their God? Amen. I want you to please write this down. Fasting will take away reproach from your life. Fasting will take away shame from your life. Say amen, saints. Amen. Hallelujah. This year, every shame assigned by the devil against your life will be taken away. Every reproach assigned against your life by the enemy will be taken away as you tap into the power of prayer and fasting and turn your heart back to God. Say amen, saints. Oh, look at verse 18. Now, now, this verse, this promise does not belong to anybody except the one who fasts. Are you listening to me, saints? Let's all read verse 18 together, please. Are you ready, saints? Let's read verse 18. Let's read it. Are you ready? Are you ready? Let's read. One, two, let's read. Then will the Lord be jealous for his land and pity his people. Now lift up your hands. Say after me, when I fast... The Lord will be jealous over me. Now let me ask you a question. Have you ever met anybody who's jealous? Have you ever met couples that the husband or the wife was jealous you know, of their spouse? Right? And you're talking to that person. Um, you know, you're talking, as pastor, you're talking to the wife, right? Uh, and the husband, he's not talking to anybody else. He's just like, he's looking, what's the pastor going to do? <laughs> you know, I mean, how come he's talking to my wife? Right? And then after, after, after the pastor or whoever is talking to the, to the wife, she go, he goes to the wife and said, what did he say to you? Nothing. He just asked how I was doing. What do you mean nothing? He was talking to you for 15 minutes. I was counting 20 minutes. Jealous. Right? Jealous. When somebody is jealous, they want that thing that they are jealous over only to themselves, right? Say amen, somebody. Listen to me. I don't care if my wife is not jealous over me. Amen? And I don't care if anybody is not jealous over me. But I want God Almighty to be jealous over me. Say amen, saints. So that God will look at the devil and say, if you touch my ball, I'll knock you in the head. Say amen. And when you fast, and when you pray, and you seek the face of God, and get your heart after God, God will say, this is my property. This is my child. This is my son. Don't you touch him, devil. Amen. Say amen. amen. Come on, lift up your hands. Say, this year, this year 
God will be jealous over me. Give God a reason to be jealous over you, praise God. Amen? Say amen, saints. Hallelujah. Look at verse 19. Yea, the Lord will answer and say unto his people. How many people of God do we have in the house? Come on, say, say after me, we are the people of God. What's God saying? Behold, I will send you corn, and I will send you wine, and send you oil, and you shall be satisfied. Let me tell you this. When you begin to fast and pray, you close the door of lack, and you open the door of prosperity. When you begin to fast and pray, you close the door of poverty, and you open the door of abundance. God will send you corn, wine, and oil. Say amen. Your days of being uh, your days of no anointing will be over. God will give you fresh oil. Say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. amen. Say amen. And you shall be satisfied. Come on. Lift up your hands. Say, this year, I will be satisfied. Say after me. Say, this year, God will satisfy me. Let me say this to you this morning. Boldly. And without hiding behind any fence, your man, a man cannot be your satisfaction. A woman cannot be your satisfaction. Amen. Amen. No wonder Mick Jagger wrote, I can't get no satisfaction. Amen. <laughs> Only God can satisfy you. Come on, lift up your hands. Say, Only God will satisfy me. Jehovah Jireh will satisfy your need. Jehovah Rapha will satisfy your need. Amen. El Shaddai will satisfy you this year. Say amen. amen. Come on, lift up both hands. Say, God is my satisfaction. Is my satisfaction. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo, thank you, Lord Jesus. Look what he says here. And I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen. Come on, put your hand on your chest. Come on, put your hand on your chest. Say shame, shame and reproach is are being taken away from my life. Say it again. Shame and reproach are being taken away from my life. Hallelujah. Amen. This year will not be a year of shame for you. This year will not be a year of reproach. For, come on, say amen. This year will not be a year of shame. This year will not be a year of reproach. Say amen. This year will be the year of the Lord. This year is going to be jubilee in your life this year. Hallelujah. Woo, thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Look, what God, look at what God says in verse 20. But I will remove far off from you the northern army and will drive him into a land barren and desolate. Say amen, saints. Hallelujah. Glory to God and his hind apart toward the sea. And his thing shall come up. Say amen, saints. Amen. Hallelujah. You will, not, you, you will not see the face of your enemies. You will see the back of your enemies. Say amen. God will drive out your enemies as you begin to fast and pray. Say amen. amen. Let's all read verse 21 together, please. Fear not, O land. Be glad and rejoice. Come on, read it again, please. Read verse 21 again. Fear not, O land. Now stop right there. We're going, instead of saying, O land, we're going to say faith lift. Are you ready? Fear not, O faith lift. Be glad and rejoice. For the Lord will do great things. Come on, lift up your hands and say, For the Lord will do great things. Say it again. For the Lord will do great things. Now say this way after me. The Lord will do great things in my life. This year. Say, for me. The Lord will do great things. Hallelujah. Whatever eluded your hands last year will come into your hands this year. The Lord will do great things for you this year. Say amen. amen. Woo, look at this. Verse 23. Be glad then, you children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. Say amen. amen. Come on, say after me. The former rain and the latter rain. 
Oh, glory to God. There's going to be an out. I'm believing God for a major outpouring this year. Amen. And the floors shall be full of wheat, and the fat shall overflow with wine and oil. Now, let's all read verse 25 together, please. And I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten, the canker worm, and the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. And you shall eat in plenty. And be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. And you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord your God and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. Come on, lift up your hands. My people shall never be ashamed. Now make it personal. Say, I will not be ashamed. Say it again, I will not be ashamed. Hallelujah. Amen. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And upon the servants and, and upon the handmaids in those days I will pour out my spirit. Say amen. amen. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Say glory to God. Shout, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Say praise the Lord. Say great outpouring. Come on, say I'm believing God for a great outpouring in my life, in my church, in my city, in my nation. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands and say, I will not be ashamed. Amen? God will not allow you to be ashamed this year. But it comes as we begin to fast and seek the face of the Lord. Amen? amen. Say amen. Many of us start our new year with a resolution, with goals for our year. Many Christians start with a time of fasting and prayer, hoping to experience God's anointing upon their life. We have a special package by Dr. Glenn Arecchion for you at a great price. A collection of the book, Seven Ways to Increase Your Anointing, and four DVD and CD titles. Usually $60. Today, just $40 plus shipping and handling. Shop online at glennarecchion.org or call 502-523-4407. All of us at Glenarechion Ministries want you to see your God-given dreams come true in 2015. 